And joining me now to talk more about the upcoming elections is Karin Zizis, the editor-in-chief of the America's Society and Council of the America's online site. Thank you so much for being here with us. So you've been covering elections in Mexico for years now. So first, how unusual and significant is it for Mexico that the two leading candidates are women? Well, it is extraordinary, and there's a lot of excitement around the fact that there are two leading women, uh, two, two candidates who are women leading. Um, now, Mexico does have certain parity laws in place that have meant that it, Mexico has become a leader in term of win, terms of women's representation in politics. Uh, so you have gender parity in Congress. You have a woman, the head of the central bank, head of both houses of, of, of Congress. Um, so we, we are seeing very broad representation by women, but this is this would be the first time that we would have a woman president in Mexico. Yeah, and all of this, uh, as you laid out, is certainly an example uh, to, to many other nations, at least specifically on that. So take us through the two candidates briefly. I mean, how do they differ? Well, the interesting thing about Claudia Sheinbaum and Xochitl Gavez is that they actually have a few interesting things in common. Um, they're close in age, 60 and 61. Um, they both got into politics around the same time, around 2000, when the country was transitioning to democracy. And they both have STEM backgrounds. They both have uh, science and engineering and, and, and that, those types of backgrounds. So. Uh, some interesting similarities, but beyond that, there are some big differences. Uh, Claudia Sheinbaum is seen as the success for, successor for Andres Manuel López Obrador, who is uh, a very popular and populist president in place, and she's promised to continue uh, with his policies. Uh, some of that has included includes ideas like reforming the judiciary, reform, reforming the electoral agency. Um, and on the other side, Sotil Gavez has warned that some of those types of moves actually will weaken Mexico's democracy, weaken its institutions. And during a recent trip to Washington, she warned uh, the Biden administration actually to take a closer look at concerns around democracy in Mexico. All right, so you, you brought up the Biden administration, uh, the U.S.-Mexico border, uh, obviously a huge flashpoint and no more so than during an election year here in the U.S. So what might that mean specifically on immigration and cooperation with Mexico? Who'd be more um, amenable to, to play ball with either President Biden or a President Trump? We've seen um, that the AMLO administration has worked closely with the White with both Donald Trump and with Joe Biden. Um, we can assume that an incoming president would try to. We're not, it's not really clear that Claudia Sheinbaum would be able to have the same sort of warm relationship that we saw uh, in the case of when Trump was president. AMLO and Trump had a surprisingly close relationship. Um, but generally, there's been a lot of uh, bilateral cooperation. We'll see that that could potentially try to, con they try to continue with that. One thing to bear in mind, though, is that Claudia Sheinbaum, she just held an event in Ciudad Juarez near the border, and she was very clear that uh, the Mexican Mexico will not be a subordinate to the United States. It see, will seek to be a partner. And for Mexico, it has a lot of its own domestic issues that voters back at home are very concerned about. Violence and crime are the top concerns for voters in the election. And they're going to be looking for, the candidates are going to be looking, and the next president will be looking for the U.S. government to do its part also in stemming the flow of guns into Mexico, which arm those organized crime groups. And uh, more than 70 percent of illicit guns seized in Mexico can be traced back to the United States. So we're going to see uh, sort of a push and pull between both sides. And we heard in that report coming into this, there is a high risk of political violence. I mean, what form do you expect that to take? Who will be the targets? I mean, what are you expecting to see? Uh, yes, sadly, we have seen some examples of attacks on candidates already. Um, and in recent years, uh, organized crime groups using attacks on uh, officials and candidates as a means to really show that they could potentially try to have an impact on uh, particularly local election results. Um, so it is definitely a concern in this election and something that we're hearing a lot of conversation and concern about. Um, sadly, there's been there's been a history of of political violence in Mexico, um, but 
we are that will be something that we're going to be seeing discussed certainly right. in this election lots on the line for uh, obviously for mexico but also here in the u.s really appreciate you breaking that down for us karen zizis thank you so much thank you for having me on it was a pleasure to be with you